Moj, on the other hand, you look great today. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming in. Um, you live in Dubai slash Toronto? Yes, that's correct. You're originally from Baghdad? Yes, that's correct as well. How old were you when you left Baghdad? Uh, seven, eight, around, yeah, around that age. And where'd you go to? Um, I've moved to Dubai first, and then I stayed between Dubai and Canada, just going back and forth. Uh, Why Canada? Uh, it was easier to go there <laughs> rather than for the what? U.S. for the passport. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and it's a beautiful country. But you went really alone? Uh, with my family first. Okay. Yeah, but then they moved back to Dubai. And, and they forgot about you? Uh, kind of. <laughs> how, how did no. you convince them that you would stay while they would go? I moved out of my parents' house when I was 17. Wait, you're an Iraqi girl and you're able to convince your parents to yes. leave your house at 17. Yes. How? Yes. What did uh, you say? What did you do? They know that I'm a responsible person and that I'm a grown-up. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm Usually that's not enough though. No, that's enough for my dad. My dad is very open-minded and he... I, I have two kids, a wife, and I'm still okay. not allowed to leave my parents' house. What do you... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, he lives with his parents right now. Oh my God. No, that's a whole... It's not because I don't have a house. I actually do own does, a house. but his parents don't let him leave the house. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> It's all good. So, Moj, you know, you've built an interesting life over the years now. Um, you finished your bachelor's? Bachelor degree in architecture from Royal Institute of British Architects. And tell us about that. Tell us about architecture. Why did you choose it? And do you like it? What? Um, I chose it because, um, well, I do love arts. I had a lot of galleries, paintings, sculptures, and I wanted something close to art. But... Uh, my father gave me two options. I'm sorry, Dad, I have to say it. If you're listening, he's I love not you. Listening. It's okay, he's not in the country. Eh? Uh, he's like, you either be a doctor or an engineer. <laughs> the typical, oh, typical I'll Iraqi family See that dream. Like, even if the parents are open-minded, yes. they will still don't give you the option of what because you want to do. Because they want a future for yes. their kids. That's how they think. They think being a doctor or an engineer will secure you a decent future. Okay. So. And it normally does. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, it does. but not happily. I, I get paid well as an architect, but really. not happily. <laughs> no, no, it's a, it's a torture. I love architecture, but to work within the field, it's a disaster. Why? The late hours. I sleep over in the office for days sometimes. If I have a submission of a project, so it's not easy. It takes a toll on you eventually. So, mm. eh, everything have a price. Everything does has a price, and yes. then. Then you decided to do something else now. You're studying again? Uh, yes, I'm starting in September with Toronto University uh, for psychology and neuroscience. Psychology and neuroscience. Completely neuroscience? different from architecture. Yeah, that, that really is far. Yes. But why? I always wanted to do it, but I didn't get the option the first time. So I've made my father happy by getting an architecture degree. And now I get to make myself happy by doing the degree I want. All the foreigners listening to be like, how is this even possible? <laughs> like, this is how it is. Yes, yes, that's how I it goes. I have the same story, actually. Lau, you know that about me. I got a biology degree that my parents forced me to get. Mm -hmm. I'm still in university because my parents want a shahada. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't finished, though. But I am still there trying to make my parents happy. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to make my parents happy. I know, Dwight. But I'm trying. Our I'm parents trying. have really high standards, and they expect us to meet them. Uh, eventually, it's for our own good. That's how they think. That's how they think they get a guarantee for us a decent future. See, I have kids now, so when I look at them, yeah. I know that they're my kids, so they're never going to become a doctor or engineer. Come on, Dwight. Don't say that. So I'm like, be an Come artist. On, they're going to go after, they're gonna go after their mothers, and their mother's really smart. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. There's a 50-50 chance, though. One of them might be dumb. We just don't know which one. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> we love you, Mira. Don't listen to him. And Mina. Mina, too. <laughs> Moj, tell us about psychology. Well, how'd mm -hmm. you get into this? Why do you like this topic? It's very interesting to study the human behavior and the human brain. I think it's a field that hasn't been explored fully yet. And people really underestimate the power of it and the importance of it, especially when I do mountaineering. It's all about the psychological state you put your mind or yourself in. It's not about physical. Physical, anyone can train and do any kind of sports they like. But it's all about mental. So for me, is to see how uh, the human brain reacts to different situations, different uh, pressure. I, I enjoy that. I enjoy analyzing that part in humans. So, uh, and, But that means also dealing with people who have troubles and yes, problems. Yes. Are you not scared that maybe... Some no. Have no. you not watched uh, The Sopranos? Many shows. Yes, I've watched many shows. I love these things. So you want to be a psychiatrist? Yes. And you're not worried because like, again, no. like I said... 
No, I'm not worried. Uh, I think I really strongly believe no one in their um, nature is bad. It's just that environment sometimes turns someone into something else. Uh, eventually those people, they are sick. They're not doing it on purpose. They're not, um, sometimes they can't help it. So it's just like a patient who have a problem with his hand or his feet or his heart. They are patients who have a problem with their brains mm. and they need help. Where do you plan on practicing? Do you have any idea or does that no, matter to you or anywhere else? Really. Okay. Um, first thing I want to do is finish up and hopefully I want to come back to Iraq and I want to do a project of psychological assessment. How serious is that though? Because that's yes. a hard challenge. It's very important. You are coming here, you are visiting now for the mm -hmm. first time in how many years? Oh wow, 17, 18 years. 18 years? Yes, yeah, very long time. So then what makes you think that you will come back here after a few I want to. I like it. I like Erbil. I like Baghdad. Okay, it's not the, in its best condition, but I do like it. And I enjoy being around. Okay. Why did it take you then 18 years to come visit your home country? Uh, my parents, again. <laughs> they were too scared. What do you uh, mean? They didn't let you come? Uh, yes, uh, because I was almost kidnapped when I was a child when I was here. Ooh. My father is a scientist. So um, right after 2003, a lot of kidnapping started to happen and killing. So they were always scared of the situation, uh, even when I came now. So like, you're talking about what happy. year? This was what year the, you guys were scarred? Like what uh, year? End of 2003. So the beginning years? Yes, yes. They got was the harshest, yes. So because of memories of there, they don't really want you to go? Yes, they still think it's the same as it was. They do not realize. Um, I think they realize it, but they're still scared that the situation is not uh, completely ideal. safe or ideal. Yes, true. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, now you came back 18 years mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I like it, really. Um, a lot of memories, uh, which um, it made me emotional the first few days, remembering places, my old house, my grandparents. Uh, my f the few friends that I have left back in Baghdad. So it was a very emotional trip for me. You saw your days. friends for the first time in 18, 18 yes, years. Yes, yes. They look completely different. Of course. Yes, my, my brain when I left, he just kept an image of them. And now when I came back, it's like, whoa, who are these people? I cannot even recognize yeah, but, them. But to be honest, like I know they're not listening, so I'm going to say this. If they're really your friends, why didn't you try to find them on Facebook? We were or we were friends, but to see them face oh, to okay, face, okay. to speak with them. Yeah, it's my brain different. just remembers them as children playing in school together. And now some of them are married. They have children. Uh, some of them are business men and women. So it's like, wow, like. Yeah. My brain cannot comprehend the difference. So who's more successful, you or them? That's a big question. Ah, come on, don't <laughs> don't do that. No, that's bad. <laughs> All right, what, what kind of a We're question is that? <laughs> so Moj, uh, you built a hobby for yourself over the years. Yes. You got married, mm -hmm. and you're married to somebody who you share a similar hobby with, which is mountain climbing. Yes, that's correct. Tell us your journey to mountain climbing. Um, well, it started with him. I've, I've always done different kind of sports, running, um, swimming, boxing, Spartan races. I've always been this part of This is where? In these. Dubai? In Dubai, yes. Look um, how many activities they have in Dubai. Spartan <laughs> racing. You know what Spartan racing is? I don't know. It just sounds cool. It's really, it's really hard. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's like a triathlon kind yes, of? Yes, something like that. So, uh, but never done hiking or climbing before. So uh, when I met him, he has already done few mountains and he's done Everest Base Camp as well. Wait, wait, just like okay. when I met him, he just did a few mountains, <laughs> Everest Base Camp uh, as well. Yeah, like, not, like not yeah. a big deal. <laughs> I, I've done Shaklawa. Is that <laughs> does that count? <laughs> it counts. Any mountain counts. Uh, so yeah. So uh, you started following him. Uh, kind of. He was like, "Oh, you've never done climbing, hiking." So I was like, "No, never." He's like, "Okay." Uh, our honeymoon was actually one month of climbing mountains and diving and doing crazy paragliding and all kind of crazy sports in Southeast Asia. And with him, I've done my first mountain. It was in Malaysia, uh, Kinabalo. So when you say I did my mountain, what are we talking about? You climb with your legs and your hands for how many hours? Okay. Uh, it depends on the altitude of the mountain and topography of the mountain. But for example, Mount Kinabalo, it's not a technical mountain, so you walk. A bit steep towards the end, but you walk all the way up. Uh, we're talking summit day, we go uh, from 3,000 to 4,000 and then go all the way down to 2,000. So we're talking about at least 10 hours of walking. 
So ten what? Hour, uh, ten hours of walking up or walking up and down? Up and down. Ten hours. Plus the day before, which is another six hours maybe. So in total, 16, 17 hours in two days. Ten hours? Yes. That's summit day. Normally it goes that way. How do so you not get tired? Yeah, you eat a lot of food. You keep on walking. You keep on talking. You try to keep yourself up. Yeah, but why? What's the point I of love this? It. Oh, I, first time I didn't get it. I was really angry yeah, on the I way up. I'm like, what the hell? Why are you taking me here? Do you hate me or something? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. He's like, just keep walking. You'll get it when you reach to the summit. And I was, I was really angry the whole way up. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. We woke up at 2 a.m. and started hiking to the summit. I'm tired. I'm cold. I'm hungry. I want to sleep. But uh, until you reach to the summit and just turn back because it was at night, so I didn't see anything and I was going up and up and up. Then reach the summit, turn my back and the most majestic view ever. Yeah, but couldn't someone take a picture and then you just... No, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. Come on, no. Tell it's us a the feeling. feeling. Tell us the feeling then. I got scared. I got really scared. It's so majestic. I It, it freaked me out at the start. Everything looks so small. I'm on top of the cloud. Everything looks uh, out of proportion. My brain cannot understand the distances. And beautiful and the sun and the quietness and... The guy just took out some tea and we sat on the cliff and started drinking tea and just everyone was quiet. Everyone was just staring at the view. Uh, and okay. yeah. So so you woke up five hours, six, seven hours. Okay. You get there, you look at the view like, oh my God, this, this is amazing. Is and, then you walk, and then you walk back down <laughs> seven hours. Yes. It teaches you. It's all about mental strength. Believe me. I like the isolation that I get on the mountain. I really do like it and I appreciate it. This is my own time. No one else is interfering. No one else is there. It's just me in the we have a Now that sounds no. beautiful. We have a room at Babylon. No, no, but that doesn't have any shabaka. <laughs> you could sit there. That's different. That's different. The cold air, the fresh air, the quiet. We don't have that. Do we? No, we don't. No, that's we different. Don't. See, I would totally agree with you. Except the walking okay. part. I'm totally against it. <laughs> we'll like, take you in a helicopter and bring no, you down. a car. <laughs> I would like to go off-roading to the top. <laughs> And then off-roading back. Helicopter is like too expensive. I can't afford a helicopter. Moj, you build a name for yourself. You have a Thank large you. following now on social media. Uh, small. Social media. A social lot of people. No one can't say social. He says social. A lot of people be following your journeys. Yes. And um, we have here so many pictures of all these different mountains, all these mm -hmm. different places. Yes. What's, what's her, what are you looking at? Her Instagram, Facebook? Yeah. Yes. Her Instagram. Instagram. What, what is her Instagram? I want to Moj. M A W J, which a uh, very interesting name. I like it. Not a lot of people use it. It means waves of the sea. Uh, waves of the sea. Yes. Well, I guess now it makes sense why you saw it. You can also you can nature. also say Moji Radio. Moji Radio. Yes, exactly. <laughs> M A W J dot El Daraji, which is so fitting for you. The 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 Kadirma, yeah, the stairs lady. <laughs> How do you spell El Daraji? D A. D A. Double R. Oh, there's A J I. There's no L. Bella, no. there is. L L. A L A L D D A A Double R Double R A J I A J I We will attach we will we will uh, tag you of course on social Thank you. Um Moj, so we saw pictures of your latest no, trip. This is A. where you came from. Yes. Helgurd Mountain. You were looking at the picture. This when was this? Two, three days ago? Uh first of May. So a few days ago, right yes. here, you are wearing very thick clothes. Yes. You're wearing glasses, a big <laughs> jacket, big boots. And you are standing on top of snow, yes. lots and lots of, lots snow. of snow, and you have the Iraqi flag right there. Yes. So, tell us about um, how was the Halgood Mountain? Explain it to us. How do you compare it to other mountains? Uh, amazing. Uh, I've done few mountains where there was snow, Elbrus and Russia, but this was completely different. The scenery was amazing. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the team. Uh, we had a team of uh, five other climbers with me from Kurdistan. Uh, especially Ms. Uh, Ari, he's my very good friend and he's been, he's a professional mountaineer. He lived in these mountains and climbed Mount Helgard like what, 60 times, 70 times minimum. So I think without him, I wouldn't have made it. They've been very supportive. Uh, the journey was amazing, tiring, a lot of snow, I, even though it's almost summer, so the snow should be less, but we were surprised with lots of snow and avalanches which means um, um, a snow slide. So the snow was up to the knees at some point and it was really hard to walk with it because your feet keeps on sinking. 
and uh, it was really sunny, so sunburned, if anyone is watching. Sunny, <laughs> but it was cold. Cold, yes. But the sun does help. It gives a lot of warmth. The moment the sun goes, it gets really, really cold. Did you feel uncomfortable any, at all during the trip? Uh, that's normal. In every trip, you have to feel a little bit uncomfortable, a bit cold at night when you're sleeping in the tent. But that's that's pretty normal. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> sleeping what? In tent. You slept there? Of course. <laughs> Dalawi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm checking her Instagram. I saw the picture already, so it wasn't a big surprise. <laughs> you slept in yes. the mountain? Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's how it goes. Well, she slept on the mountain. <laughs> she didn't sleep in the mountain. Okay, you slept on the mountain. <laughs> yes, that's correct. In the cold? Yes. How do you not hibernate? Hi hypertension? <laughs> hibernate. <laughs> hibernate? I'm not a, not a bear. <laughs> yeah. How do you not go through hypertension? Uh, you have to stay warm. You have to stay hydrated. You have to use special type of tents, special type of sleeping bags that are really warm and thick. Uh, put a lot of uh, home water inside your sleeping bag so it keeps your feet warm, especially feet and hand, because this is the first thing that gets cold. And uh, if it stays long cold for a very long time you could develop frostbite where you're where it's bye bye finger <laughs> yes <laughs> literally your fingers start to die and they have to chop them off eventually yeah. so uh, and you decided yes. to sleep in this condition yes that's normal that's how you do it if you go to Everest how do you think you go all the way to the summit you cannot do it in a day okay so so you've been to Everest base camp base camp yes Okay, for those of you who don't know, mm -hmm. I, I know a little bit about it, yes. but for those of you who don't know, yes. what's the difference between Everest Base Camp and like Everest? Everest is the summit of the mountain. Base Camp is the starting point where hikers start to hike to the summit. So the trek to Everest Base Camp is quite popular in Nepal. It takes around 7 to 10 days. It depends on your speed. And you go from 2,000 up to 5,400. Okay, so Noor, if you didn't understand what she said, the place where hikers start to hike Everest, it's how many, how many days? Uh, let's say 10 days. With, 10 days? Uh, no, 7 to days get to go to the up. place where you start hiking. Yes. Because oh the last God. 10 days you weren't hiking, you were dancing. If you do Everest, you stay two months in the mountain, hiking up and down to acclimatize your body. Because your body could die out of the altitude, so you have to go up 5,000, come down, up 5,500, come all the way down then up 6,000 and come all the way down. Are you serious? Yes. Why can't I just... You'll die. Because the You'll die. Lack of oxygen. The more, so, the higher you so go. So basically people aren't climbing Everest. They're climbing up and down Everest. Yes. Oh yes. my God. Many times. And mountains next to it. And then you reach the dead zone, which is above 7,500. Yeah. And to 8,000. This is where your body is actually dying. So you have to do it as fast as possible. The longer you stay, the more dangerous it gets. What do you mean your body's actually dying? You're starving. There's no enough oxygen. Your body is starving for oxygen. You have to use oxygen tanks uh, and masks as well. And you, you don't have the thought of actually doing that, do you? I'm doing it for sure. Hopefully in the next year or the one after, definitely. Moj, but we've That's heard of many doing. people die in this mountain. If you, you're careful enough, you should be fine. But people were careful too and they died. You can die driving your car. There, you, you have actually a higher chances of dying driving a car than climbing the mountain. Yeah, because we're mountain. driving the car every day, but we're not climbing the mountain every day. Still, the chances of someone dying is really not that high. Some it, people just don't prepare enough, so the chances of dying get higher. Do you know higher. how many Iraqi people have been on top of the mountain and how many of them were women? No. Cause, cause In I, Everest? Yeah, never. Never? No, we don't have anyone. And not a single Iraqi has no, reached no. Kurd. Not no. a lot of people have we're, done it. We're even. doing. We're we're creating right now a team between me and my Kurd friends, hoping that we can uh, somehow arrange it to go all of us as a team. Oh my to God! Mount you're Everest. recruiting people to do this. They love it. They want to do it. They were just happy to find out that someone else is interested in a similar dream. Uh, and it's in Nepal, right? In Nepal, yes. The whole thing is in Nepal. Do you go to another country while you're walking? Uh, no, no, in Nepal. Do you so. know what Everest is? Yes, Nepal. Yeah, it's a big mountain though. It's it's so from the borders Nepal of China. to China. <laughs> Some Bhutan. of it goes to Bhutan. Yes, it's on the borders. But you go up and yeah. then you're still in Nepal. And then you go down, you're still in Nepal. Yes. Depends, it's a big mountain. Okay. <laughs> the part that normal people climb is all in Nepal. You don't, yes. don't act like you're there's, a mountain there's one expert. In China you don't know. Well, I, I've just watched a vlog of a guy that climbed <laughs> it like a month ago. So that's how I know. Most, I have many friends right now. What's the goal of this hobby of yours you have now? What do you want to do uh, with this? First of all, I want to raise the Iraqi flag. Uh, countries, Why does this matter to you? Because 
In mountaineering, countries around the world, they send special teams to raise the country flags on the highest mountains and the toughest mountains in the world. It's a very well-known sport, but maybe in our region, it's not as popular as you would like to think. Uh, so hopefully, first of all, raise the Iraqi flag. It's an achievement for myself as well. It's something I want to do. Uh, I want to break my fear. I do always have fear of heights and these things. So this was actually. But you don't have that. You fear have anymore. a fear of heights. I do. I still do, but not as much as I used to you have. You climb mountains, woman. Yes. <laughs> That's impressive. You have. This is how. This is where psychology comes in. You have to shut in your fears. In midway, every. What kind climber, of fear is that? I'm afraid of heights. What do you do for a living? I, I climb, I climb mountains. mountains. <laughs> <laughs> That's very impressive, though. Seriously. Because it's. I don't want it to control my life. Yeah. I'll challenge it till the last day of my life, even if it doesn't go away fully. What I else? Don't what it. else do you want to do with this hobby? Uh, I'm hoping with every. I'm, right now, I'm doing a project, the World Seven Summits, the what highest summit this? in every continent. So, uh, with every mountain, I would like to do. I'm, I'm planning and arranging for that right now. That we do a crowdfunding uh, inter all around the world with every summit that um, we choose a cause, maybe orphans uh, people in Iraq certain people who need help and with every summit we collect the money and give it to them to the don to the charities. donations yes it's donations so with every summit I collect so money now climbing donated. has a meaning then yes the lie, now I'm liking it more you're you're trying to why are you so like I don't know he's zooming out I, 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 Mode, you're talking to the most laziest person I, 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 in all like, of this country like my dream is to be on top of Everest and raise the Kurdish flag just like yours yes, is to raise the Iraqi yes, flag yes but then you would put the work in I would just imagine that and then go on Photoshop and try to Photoshop myself doing it some people did it in India actually yeah and they were sued <laughs> no but the problem is is that I, I, you love it, and yes, you. Yes. For me, I look at a mountain, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> it looks, it looks high up. <laughs> well, Moj, we're gonna definitely keep track of your Thank travels. You. This Thank looks you. very impressive. Thank you so much. Just try to stay alive, please. I will do my best. <laughs> and whatever you do, make sure your husband's with you when you go to these big ones. Uh, he cannot join. He has certain injuries, so he cannot be wh there. Wh wh wait, wait, wait. Were the injuries because of this, this hobby? No skiing. He, he, Another dangerous. He's a professional skier, and he fell down, and he injured both his knees. And he's also a professional climber. Yeah. So are you. Yes. So be careful and don't fall <laughs> down. Okay. I'll do my best. I can't promise. Now that we've met you, if Thank we hear you. the story, we're going to be really sad. Thank you. So please oh, be careful. Sweetheart. Thank you. Well, you look like you're very responsible, very professional. Thank of course. You. Thank you. Your pictures from all these uh, from all around the world look like uh, no easy task. So you've done already amazing work. So we'll definitely keep track of you and Thank see you. Uh, where you join. does this journey takes you. What? You should join, you guys. Both of you. Both yeah. of you. Not well, just him. <laughs> join. Come on. Uh, a small hike. Not even a big a mountain. A small hike is okay. It's okay. okay. Can yeah. we go to the Koya Mountain? <laughs> we can do that. It's my dad's hometown. It's not really that big. Nice. How high? I believe like 200. Ah, uh, come on. Seriously? Maybe That's it's like, your mountain? No, no. It's like, it's like, it's like 500. Okay, okay, acceptable. We can do that. We awesome. can definitely do that. I don't mind climbing a mountain if it if there's like rests time. <laughs> if there's like gold in the end. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> and like money, and um, yeah, Food. I'll be calling my wife. I'll be like, babes, I love you every two seconds. I might die. I might I love die. <laughs> Moj, good luck with Thank everything. Thank you. We Thank wish you. you the best of luck. You already made a lot of people proud. Good luck with everything. Thank you so much.